and welcome to Learn Ideas in 5 Minutes. This is tutorial 28 on getting started with full 3D FEM simulation in ADS. To understand FEM simulation in ADS, we will take the same filter example. I just saved as a new name so that we don't mess up the earlier simulation results we got with momentum. Now to run FEM, it's pretty similar to how we set up uh, momentum. You click on EM setup option, we choose a new template. And while you are in FEM, uh, you know, in the EM setup window, you can pick FEM as your simulator. So remember in last few videos, we were using momentum. Now this time we will use FEM. Now in order to set up FEM simulation, there, there are subtle changes from the way you use it with momentum. The port setting, the substrate, all these definitions are pretty same. So in terms of frequency, let's go ahead and set it to zero to six gigahertz, like what we use in momentum. Under output plan, we will go ahead and say fields for all the generated frequencies so that we can visualize the field after our simulation is finished. Under options, the first thing we need to do with FEM is define a physical model. That means we need to define a finite X, Y, and Z domain or extents so that FEM can be run. Remember in ADS layout, you have been only drawing the strips. You haven't drawn the dielectric. And for any 3D simulation, it's, it's important to have finite size of dielectric and you define the simulation domain. The, one of the ways we do it, and there are a couple of ways in ADS to do that. So one of the way in this video, which I will talk about, is using lateral and vertical extension. In lateral extension, you can define X and Y extents, which you want to have for your dielectric from the edge of your structure. So when I set it to 3 mm, like in this case, it will have 3 mm dielectric on either side, and then remaining portion of the dielectric will be cut, and that's what we will use for FEM. Vertical extension is the air box on the top side and the bottom side of the structure. And in this case, I have chosen uh, 5 mm, which is 10 times of my dielectric height. As a rule of thumb, you could pick six to 10 times. In my case, I'm using 0.508 mm of dielectric, and here I can easily use 5 mm. So depending upon how, what you want to do, you can select this option. Then the wall boundary is like your boundary condition. So here I'm using open boundary condition, but you could use perfect conductor, magnetic wall, at these extents when, when your structure is at the boundary. Right, now always remember in substrate, um, in current case, we have a cover plate at the bottom. So by default, you will have a PC on the lower set axis. So there is, there will be no special thing applied when you look at uh, the open boundary condition on the bottom side. Now that's the first important setting to limit the size of the dielectric and define the problem size, which will be simulated. In, in terms of mesh, the simple settings you need to do is select the delta error, which is the the simulation accuracy you're looking for. So currently 0 0.02 means 2%. If you want to reduce, you can make it 1%, but by default it's 2%. And it works with most of the micro strip or strip line kind of circuits. It's good enough. You define the minimum number of adaptive mesh uh, refinement passes and the maximum number. So the minimum I would recommend is at least two, but you can go ahead and increase it if you need a finer mesh to be created and if you're simulating a very small geometry. In terms of refinement, by default in momentum, we recommend you to use maximum frequency because that's where you have the shortest wavelength. And when you create cells per wavelength, you always have good enough mesh for simulation. And the same concept is used for FEM. But in case of simulating filter kind of circuits in FEM, we recommend you to use the manual selection frequency and this frequency should be in passband and close by the passband so that your structure has the, the maximum E field, allowing you to create much better mesh. Once you're ready, just hit the simulate button and this will take one or two minutes on my laptop to simulate. So I'll pause the video and we will come back to results once it is finished. Okay, now our simulation is finished and we have the data display. And if we go back to our simulation log, you can see it took like one minute, 10 seconds on my simple laptop to run DC to six gigahertz. And it's pretty, pretty reasonable. And it took around 200 MB of memory, which is pretty decent considering we were running full 3D FEM simulation. 
Now this result looks very similar to momentum. However, we can do a very quick comparison to see how FEM and momentum compares. For a very quick comparison, we can go to history tab here, switch on the history which will freeze these traces on these graphs. And from the list of available data sets, we can pick momentum data set. And you can see there's a very minor variation between FEN and momentum when we run this analysis. Thanks for watching this tutorial. Hope this will be of help to you and look forward to see you in next video.